yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know I owe you the money, okay? I mean, I came, I came up with five. Hello? 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 Put Paul on, okay? Hey, stop treating me like a child. Okay, I know I owe you money. I came up with five grand. Okay, you know, and I can give you a few hundred, of 45,000. Come on now. For, hello? Hello? summer. Who's that? Your wife? What? Your wife. You look like a man who's in the doghouse. What'd you do? Cheat on your wife? The wife cheat on you? She leaving you? I knew it. So, not excited about the holy union of matrimony, huh? She figured she better get out while she still could. Yeah, well, fuck them. They're all dumb bitches. Give them the world and they want Detroit to. What are you talking about? Women. Take mine, for example. She goes and gets herself pregnant. Not my fault. She said she was on the pill. She stopped taking it because she said she gained too much weight. I said, take it anyway. That's that. No, she goes and gets herself pregnant. And she gets all pissed off when she sees me talking to another woman. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you? Embarrassing me and all that shit. She said, who's the girl? And I said, a business contact? Which was practically true. She said, oh yeah. You make out with all your business contacts when you see Jimmy and Johnny at the bar? Do you go make out with them? I said, what the hell are you talking about? I wasn't kissing her, that's all your imagination. She goes, oh yeah? Like the time that I imagined you kiss, making out with my sister? And I go, yeah? Boy, that was a mistake. Her sister goes and tells her everything, in detail, if you know what I mean. Well, she freaking loses her mind for about five minutes, and the girl that I'm with is getting very uncomfortable. But she's a smart one, doesn't say a word, not a peep. Well, after her bitch session, my wife's that is not the girl's. She stands up, walks up to the girl, pops her in the mouth, walks out to her car and drives away. Women! <laughs> Did you? Did I what? Well, did you kiss the girl? Well, yeah, I kissed her, but my wife didn't need to know about that. So what'd you do to your wife? Excuse me? What did you do to your wife? It's just mind your own fucking business, okay? Okay, okay. Boy, it's hot. Must be like 90. Yeah, it is. Do you know why we hate the Mexicans? Because <laughs> they make us look fat and lazy. Which we are. It's not because of the jobs they steal. I mean, please, who wants to go and pick vegetables or mop floors in the middle of the night or dig cesspools? But here's the real question. Here's the million dollar question. Why do the Mexicans hate us? It's how we portray them in TV commercials. I was watching one the other night. And Dad's making tacos and couldn't get the taco shell to stand up, so he takes out a hammer and nails and pounds it into the kitchen table. Fucking idiot. And his kid comes along in and gets one of those tacos with the flat shell as if to say, Dad, you're such a toad. You know, they make kids out to be such smart asses. But they do that to all of us. Kids make adults out to be dumb. Men make women out to be stupid. Oh, and then there's the commercials. I'd say that if you get a new piece of company in your sofa selectional, your wife's gonna fuck your brains out on it. 
You've seen those husband and wife are going at each other about the kids, husband, wife's ragging the husband, and boom, brand new carpeting, and she's all over them and shit. <laughs> you know, I think that our kids see this, and it's just telling our girls that sex will get you whatever you want. It's telling our boys that just a bunch of wusses. You know what I mean? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh, God, it's hot. You know, I grew up not too far from here. Yeah, right up on 27th Avenue. Yeah, played baseball in the diamonds behind us. Yeah, baseball all summer, hockey all winter. <laughs> so far. You from around here? Yeah. Uh, boy, things sure have changed. When I was a kid, there was a zillion little grocery stores all over the place, little mom and pop places. And I'd get on a bike, ride around, maybe stop off, get a bubble up, some gum, Cassiolix. Little generals, beer nuts. <laughs> yeah, things sure have changed. All it is now is <coughs> a restaurant, among grocery stores, some change. You know, it's too bad that they closed up the Hollywood Theater. I remember when they played their last movie up there. Yeah, my dad had a great idea of buying it. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, he said it was a gold mine. He had it all planned out. My sisters would sell pop, popcorn, and candy, you know, concessions. And then I would clean up the place in the bathroom, and my mom would sell tickets, and my dad would sit back and count receipts at the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> my mom says, what are you going to pay the kids? My dad says, pay them. I never got paid for the work I did when I was a kid. My mom said, yeah, but you grew up on a farm. These are city kids. They're going to expect to be paid. <laughs> You like baseball? Yeah, but actually I love it. Been to the new stadium? Yeah. Went to, to a game there last year. Baker pitched, got five runs, lost seven five. Ah, but I love that new stadium. It's small, like a National League stadium, but it's hard to hit a home run in. And oh, they got Kaz Marichek's there. Oh, that's freaking great. <laughs> oh, and their beer stands. Not a fan of their beer stands. Went to one, all they had was white beer. Some sections don't even have beer at all. I guess that's fine. Have you seen the statue of Kirby? What the hell's up with that? Doesn't even look like him. Hey, Killebrew, what a joke. You know, I remember Killebrew from the 60s. Yeah. Every time he came up to bat, people would stop what they were doing. You know, we used to sit out in a cheap suit and you know what? I swear that the killer hit a home run every game that I went to. <laughs> that was a long time ago. You know, I, I do love baseball. Yeah. Those crisp summer nights. <laughs> yeah. Smell of uh, stale beer on the bench next to you. Huh. Oh, mom used to buy us a hot dog at every game. Maybe we ought to squirt ketchup on one side and mustard on the other. You take a bite out of it and, oh my God, it was like you went to heaven. <laughs> they had the best hot dogs at the map. Oh, and old guys, second, third inning, they would light up these big cigars. And, you know, the smoke would just drift back about 20 rows. We bring our gloves to every game, hoping to catch a home run ball. <laughs> you know, the smell of leather. Cigar smoke in the air. <laughs> Still spilled beer. <laughs> That's baseball to me. You know, you don't find that much anymore. Well, I'm all for making things family friendly, but hey, some things you just shouldn't change. Yeah. Not old games. Every Saturday afternoon, kids got in free if you brought along an adult. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> You know, when they tore down the Met, I couldn't bring myself to go down there. I didn't get to say goodbye. You know, kind of wish I had. Oh. Excuse me. Hello, honey. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just took off of work early. No, no, I'm sitting down at the park on our bench. 
Yeah, I'll be up. I'll be up in a little while. Okay. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, we can watch the game tonight. That'll be fine. Yeah. Bye, honey. Your wife? Uh, no. My daughter. She's a big baseball fan. Yeah. You know, I took her to her first game in 92, and I remember Kevin Tafferty was pitching. Eight innings. Gave up two runs. Twins won eight to two. <laughs> you know, we went to a lot of games after her mother passed on. Kind of took our minds off of things. You know, I hope that she would see the Twins in a World Series game. Thought it would happen last year, but no. Those Yankees. Those damn Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> and she's in hospice. And she's dying. Sorry. How long? Uh, a few days, uh, a week, not much longer. Sorry. Yeah. You know, after her mom died, we used to come down here quite a bit. We just sit here. But things kind of drift off. <clears throat> kind of became a habit. This was our bench. You know, when life throws crap my way, I just come down here and sit and I start feeling a little better. You know? Yeah. Took her down to Mexico late in the winter for some experimental treatment. I should have seen this coming, but. All that they did was feed her some green goo and they poked and prodded her. Said she was getting better. But then the money ran out and they said they couldn't cure her. Yeah. I should have seen that coming. Actually, I did. So now we're back home. She's dying in hospice. And I'm out $50,000. <laughs> What's so funny? <coughs> I was just uh, thinking what will happen when the Pollock figures out I may never pay him back. <laughs> the Pollock? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Paul the Pollock. <laughs> oh, that's what they call him, but not to his face. No, not if you want to go on living. <sighs> Polish mom. He loaned me a 50 grand out of the kind goodness of his heart. I thought I could pay him back a few thousand at a time. When I got home, I found out I lost my job. The official explanation was, your job has been eliminated. So I scrounged up five grand, gave it to him, figured I could pay back, you know, a few hundred then at a time. But no, he found out I, I lost my job and now he wants 45 grand now, right, right now. Oh, fuck it, he'll get it when I, when I feel like it. Well, today may be your lucky day. I got a job that needs to be done. You want it? What? I got a job for you. Something in your story touched me. Doesn't take a lot of time and the money's good. Uh, what is it? You go to a specific place at a specific time, you pick a car up at said specific place, and you drive it to another specific place. And walk away. Easy peasy, keys are in the car, the directions are in the car. Five grand, that's what you'll make. Do this a few times, you'll have all the money that you need. Thanks. <coughs> you don't have to think about it. Eh, there's nothing to think about. It'll take you two hours. OK. 
can make five G's, five thousand dollars. Can hook you up with a few gigs a week. You'll have enough money to pay off the Polak and spend all your days with your daughter. I need a day or two. You don't have a day or two. You owe the Polak a lot of money. Do you think that he's going to wait out of the kindness of his heart until you find a new job and pay him back a couple hundred a week? Do you know how long it takes to pay back $45,000? I don't know. Do you think he's going to wait? It's not how these guys operate. They'll take you out and they'll make an example of you. Or else you'll just cease to exist. Now I know what you're thinking. Yeah, it's illegal. Big money almost always is. But it's safe, totally safe. You just drive from one spot to another. Well, we gotta act fast. There's a lot of guys on this. I need a day or two. Come on, there's nothing to think about here. You got a lot on your mind. Your daughter's dying. You owe a lot of money. This will ease your mind a little bit. What do you say? Well, I, I don't know. You know what? You know what? I'll tell the bosses that you'll start in a couple weeks. After your daughter's dead, then... I'm sorry to be cracks, but that's how it is. What do you say? I don't, I don't know. Something doesn't, doesn't sound right. I need to think about it. Give me a day or two. I can't give you more time. I need to know now. Do you believe in God? I used to, you know, but now, well... You know I miss Nans. Best burger joint in the city bar none. Yeah, but she closed up. I was talking to her about it. Said she just, she loved it, but she just couldn't handle the grind anymore. <laughs> Guess she wanted to see more of life. <laughs> well, it's getting late. I gotta go meet my girl. Business contact. <laughs> see you around. Yeah, I'll see ya. No.